Okay, we're gonna do some color pencil and crayon work, which means I can close this down and you should see Winslow Homer's Skirmish in the Wilderness, this painting from 1864. So we were drawing from this earlier this week and looking at all the details, how he composed his image and the information he's sharing about life in the Civil War there. If I pull up my Hue desktop camera there, you should be able to see that. Yeah, all right. Um, there it is, doesn't wanna come up for some reason. Should be able to see an 11 by 17 black and white poster that we drew earlier this week. So I'm gonna come in here and we're probably not gonna finish this in one sitting, but we'll get some work done on it. We'll add some color to this black and white version. Of course, I've scanned this in, so I've saved it as a black and white version. And we'll come back to that later. There's gonna be a couple steps here. I'm thinking I'm gonna work in colored pencil and also in crayons, but the crayons will be for the big areas, the woods, and the colored pencil will be for the soldiers. So we're gonna start with, I'm gonna start with my favorite pencil in the bunch, this wonderful sort of late twilight purple that I have. It's kind of a brownish purple. And I usually go through when I'm working with colored pencil and I'll work in um, all the, I'll find my pencil sharpener and I'll work in all the uh, all the shadows first. I wanna give my, huh, there's something jamming this pencil sharpener. All right, we'll just go with a dull pencil. I wanna work in all my shadows to bring out the shapes of the characters. This is kind of a reddish purple. So I'm just gonna lightly, gently tuck in shadows under these arms, where those arms go over the body, where the gun goes in front of the leg, it'll sort of shadow the leg there. We might tuck some shadows under these brims. If you're just drawing along at home for a, a relaxed Friday afternoon, that's great. If you have a, a drawn pencil inked picture that you're gonna color, that's wonderful too. We can start together with this with this purple. And what I'm looking for is um, edges of this character that are maybe under edges that are shadowed a little more. Like there's light on top of my hand here, but as you come around the edge, you start to see some shadows there. Um, so actually, let's find a slightly more bluish purple in here. Let's go in, before we get this reddish purple out, let's go in with sort of an indigo this violet here, that's more of a shadow purple. I'm gonna skip over the buttons because I want those to shine out even in the shadows. That's the purple I need. Even stuff that isn't blue or purple colored, I'm gonna give a little bit of a shadow to, like his face here. I'll go in and I'll shadow Jonas slightly. Jonas might be even more in shadow because he's like tucked behind a tree here. So he might, be in the shadow of the tree. Let's see, where's our light coming from? I see the tree is light on this side and dark on this side. So the light's coming this way. So Jonas's face is actually in shadow here. And he's in shadow as he tucks around the tree. Now Freeman Colby, let's see, he's gonna have, I want him to be a little lighter and easier to see, but his brim casts a shadow. He's definitely leaning shadow side. So we'll just gently tuck some shadow on this side of him. And the gun and his arms maybe cast some shadow here. Gun shadows over his arm. See that? It's going to go over his arm. This part right here is casting a shadow probably down a little further. There we go. You can sort of imagine it or act it out with something over your arm and see how it casts a shadow. And then maybe we'll also come in here. Let's also give the tree a little shadowing too. And what this does when you shadow everything in this area, it's gonna sort of tie everything together with a, a layer of shadow that is kind of, it's consistent, you know? It'll all have the same kind of bluish purplish look to it. Maybe he's kind of casting a shadow on this tree in general. And then I'll color the tree a sort of brownish bark color. I'll color his uniform a blue color. The tree is probably going to be mostly crayon, but I'll mix in some colored pencil shadows. I wonder, just out of curiosity, let's take a look at Winslow Homer's painting. How does he work those shadows? This is a little pixelated when you get in that close. 
The shadows look more like grays on his painting, but he does have some interesting light on the shadowed side of the tree. So we can use that. We're gonna leave a, a row of light along the edge of the tree there. So we'll shadow up to the edge and leave a little bit of white there that's gonna carry some light and learn how to represent this stuff from the masters when we look in close. Of course, Winslow Homer's working with paint. So he actually, I notice he kind of puts in some dark layers. He builds a dark layer and then builds light colors on top of it. Colored pencil, if I do all dark, I can't come in and build light on top of it. I have to leave the light open. So we have to think about it a little differently. I'm thinking about this a little differently already. I'm gonna shade this whole side of this character. The tough guy, this is the tough guy. He's my character who seems to know everything and he can clue the characters in when something's going on. He can kind of tell them what's what. I use him as a way to tell the characters and the readers, right? I'm thinking this whole leg's in shadow now, look at that. And maybe that side, there we go. That's starting to look like he's tucked into the shadows a little more. And maybe, you know, this will all be done with, um, with crayon in here. So I'm not gonna color pencil it a lot. Colored pencil is really good for getting into the fine details around the characters' bodies. But this stuff out here, wow, this is just gonna be a mess of color. So we'll leave it. Maybe a little bit of this purpling on the underside of this tree. Your eye will, you, you might not see that yourself, but you know, your eye will kind of pick up on the tones of the colors once we've got it all shaded in. Just be patient now. And we'll add some purples, maybe a little bit to round out this character on the shadow side, just the shadow sides of all these march, marching soldiers. They're gonna be kind of blurred back there. It'll be sort of a blue blur. But if it has a little bit of shadow on some sides, that'll help it come out. All right, let's get that hat a little shadow side. There we go. So now we've got our shadow layer down, right? We've got our, our purples and it's already starting to look like there's some light playing in here. I like how the, the colored pencil, especially these two purples combining, kind of have a, there's a, like a reflected light playing on here. So let's see if we can achieve that right along the edge here of Freeman Colby too. There we go. We'll give him like a, an outline, like there's a reflected light coming to him. Okay, maybe like an outline of Light purple, that can kind of hint at something a little more reddish, a little more fire-like even. Like what's up ahead? Danger. Okay. So now I'll go in there with, I want their uniforms to stand out as bright blue. So I'm going to give them a base layer of this blue. And this I'm not really going to shade at all. I'm just going to go in and make it pretty smooth. You'll see the purple shows right through it, of course. This will also be the base layer of their pants, which were a lighter color blue. And then the jackets were a darker wool. They were wearing all wool. They couldn't get cotton reliably during the war. So we'll give them a light blue base layer. Then I'll go back on these jackets and darken the jackets. I think those belts will be um, pretty brown leather belts. But what this does is it starts it starts mixing those purples and blues together. And we're going to mix a bunch of colors here. There's no almost nothing here that's going to be just straight from the crayon or straight from the pencil. We're going to mix a bunch of colors and we'll mix some surprising colors in there too. Because when you look at something in the real world, you know, it's reflecting light from all over. And my hand isn't just brown or pink or, or tan or anything. It's got reflected light all over and different colors in it. So we're going to try to capture a little of that in the way we color these. I use a bunch of different ways to color these. In volume one, as I showed you, I, I colored it on the computer, got very flat colors, right? Just clicked with my paint bucket and filled that in, totally flat colors, which is a nice look. In volume two, I started using colored pencil and crayon around it and mixing those colors, it gives you a very different look, even painting some white over those colors when it's needed. We, it may come to that with these um, flashes of, of clouds of gun smoke and stuff. Oh, let's not forget the hats. They're gonna be the same colors as the jackets. 
we give them all the same blue base layer. Then we'll come back and make some changes. Like maybe one uniform will be a little dirtier than another and we'll add some reds and grays and soot and stuff. Maybe some stains on their knees and things like that. At this point, they've been marching and camping for a couple days and they are just entering the wilderness area of uh, Northern Virginia. And the, the ground could be very muddy if it rained. At this point, it's early May. The woods are alive. Summer is on its way. And they march into these dense, crowded woods and encounter, for the first time in months, they encounter the Confederate Army. And so this is the moment where they're skirmishing. That's what Winslow Homer was painting there. They're skirmishing in the wilderness. They're just sort of moving through the trees, trying to find where the enemy is. Now, um, Winslow Homer did not play up the blues or, or the blues are faded or didn't come through in this scan at least. Um, these are pretty dark black uniforms and it was pretty dark blue, but I'm gonna play up the blue just to, to emphasize the color. I think, our, um, I think our, our cartoony approach here one of the advantages is you kind of play up the colors a little more. It's a little more eye-catching. Maybe it's a little closer to what it looked like when you really had the intensity of live living color in front of you. A lot of these museum piece uniforms you see, the colors have faded quite a bit, right? Um, let's, while we have this out, let's go through and lightly lay down a base layer on all these, this blue blur moving through the woods. I'm actually coloring outside the lines there because like I did on, on volume two's front cover, I want that moving band of, of hundreds and hundreds of marching men in the regiment. I want it to sort of feel like, like, a, like a photograph of moving water, like a, the way the photos looked back then. If you've ever seen, there are a couple amazing photographs of Civil War soldiers on the march. Not standing, not posed, but on the march. And it is amazing and ghostly and fascinating. They're blurred, they're moving. It's kind of a wasted shot because cameras couldn't capture motion at the time. But as a cartoonist, I wanna capture that sense of motion. It's not wasted at all if it gives us a sense of the movement. So that in there is gonna be a blur, slowly moving through the woods while these guys pause and look. There are also some cool um, staged photos of skirmishers so you can get a sense of what they look like there. Now I'm gonna come back in with, and I guess this will be the blue or the, um, this says light blue, but it doesn't really look too light blue to me. Oh yeah, that's the one I want. One of these blues is kind of gray. I'm gonna come in and darken their caps and coats. And this really blurs those blues together and smooths out those shadows. This is why Winslow Homer kind of painted them as gray black. It's a very dark blue, stained blue, that wool. And also totally darkened by campfire soot and the dirt of the trail. I'm gonna leave the top of his sleeve open as if the light's shining on it. And maybe we'll get some reflected greens and yellows from the woods into his blue right there. I'll leave it a little light. I'm gonna go back for a moment and check on. Oh, we've got some comments. Um, Curious George says, hello. Curious George says, this is cool. I've never seen a cartoon making live. Cool. Well, it's great to have you here, Curious George. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for stopping by. This is, um, by the way, this is not the style I use inside the book. Well, it is. I use it on the cover, right? And I, I color it fully. And then I do a bunch of posters showing key moments in the story. Um, and these are all full color on my website and on the Patreon for patrons. Um, you can download them and check them out. Um, and there are videos showing how I drew these. But inside the book, I keep it super, super simple, right? I use mostly a stick figure style because that enables me to show these huge um, landscapes and complicated stories in a simple, readable way. 
Um, like this image here, I actually drew from uh, these historical images like this Edwin Forbes picture. Oh, where is it? Did I go buy it? Well, it's in here somewhere. It's pictures like, oh, I guess I left it out of this, but it's pictures like this one where they drew it on the march and they captured the men moving. Um, it's in here somewhere, but this is actually copied completely from a landscape sketch of an artist at the time. Just as this picture here that I'm doing in color is drawn from uh, the painting, the 1864 painting of Winslow Homer. Because Winslow Homer, he was there. He was moving with the soldiers, uh, living with them in camp and drawing them every day um, as a correspondent. So I know he's a reliable source. I know he wanted to get the details right. And I know he wanted to tell the story of these people who were involved here. He drew and painted a lot of Union soldiers. He also drew and painted a lot of uh, freedmen and former slaves who were helping out um, who were formerly enslaved in the South and were helping out around the Union Army, making the Union War effort possible, really. Um, and he painted these amazing stories in narrative paintings. So I've learned a lot from him, uh, Winslow Homer, and his art and his subjects. And I'm using that to inform my cartooning. Now, like we said the other day when we made this, I drew this, I scanned it as a uh, black and white image. So I have that here on my computer as a pure black and white image. And I'm going to use that because even when I'm done coloring this, once I've got all the colors in place and everything looks, you know, okay, acceptable, if not, you know, maybe not perfect, but acceptable. Um, then I'm going to take that black and white version and drop it over this with just the black lines. So you'll get, see how the, the blue is kind of lightening the black here. It's actually making it harder to see that line. And it's especially when I get the crayons out, you'll see the crayons will make these black lines a little faint because the crayons will go right over them. So once I'm done coloring, I'm going to come back in with the black and white version, drop it on top of this, and have a whole layer of black lines that go over the crayons and colored pencils. It's going to, it's my favorite moment when you see the colors and the crisp, clear black lines. So we'll see, the moment of truth. That's a little ways down the road though. We gotta lay down some colors here. So these uniforms are starting to look, see how that, that little band of light across the top and then the purple band we put across the bottom, it kind of fleshes out that arm and makes it look a little more rounded, right? A little more shadowed and round. Maybe I'll add a little bit of blue around the pants here, just to make it look a little uneven because they've been marching for, and camping for a few days. They're not gonna be crisp and clean and smooth looking. They're gonna be all wrinkly and dirty, smelly. We'll, we'll add dirt and dust and stuff in a little bit. I think you're a little more shadowed down there, aren't you? All right, let's lay down a layer of uh, skin tones. We're gonna make them each with a slightly different skin tone. We're gonna put down a sort of a pinkish, yellowish, peachish skin tone around here. I'm gonna mix some, um, these are Northern guys, European heritage. We're gonna mix in some pinks. Maybe Freeman Colby's a little edged with pink. This guy will give a little more, he's the tough guy. So we're gonna give him a little more field tan edging here. It's okay if it looks a little, little uh, if it doesn't look quite finished at this point, because we're gonna also smooth it all in with a white crayon. Let's give Jonas some gold and yellow and a pink nose. I usually give him a pink nose. He's the only character in the whole book with a pink nose, with any kind of nose. Most of the characters, as you can see, are are uh, noseless. They're totally simple stick figures. There were, um, they were called U.S. colored troops. There were African-American groups, uh, units involved in the wilderness. Some really interesting stories there. And I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to getting into them. 
but they're not in this scene just yet. They're going to enter the fray a little later. We'll give Freeman Colby his lock of hair. Um, that's getting there. While I have the brown out, let's do the gun stocks. I didn't get into too much detail with these guns, but I think I'll just do gunmetal gray bands. Really just cartooning here, not nothing too fancy. I probably should give them a, a little line of purple along the edge. Oh, I did that here on the gun stock. Whoops, missed Jonas's hand. And we'll mix all sorts of other colors just outlining their faces. Once we know what's around them, then we'll add some reflected colors around their edges. That kind of makes them pop out. You know, like we might go, if there's a lot of green branches around, we might add just a touch of green around here, right? As if it's reflected, maybe a touch of green down his back. It's subtle, but it really can be striking. What do we say for the guns? A little gray for the bands. That's going to kind of mix them, blend them in. I'll even add some gray along the top. It's not like if you were looking at these guys from 30 feet away, like we are in this scene, you really wouldn't see all their, you wouldn't see all the details of their uniforms. It would be kind of a blur. So I, I, I'm okay with those um, details kind of blurring together. Just like I don't think you'd really see the faces on these guys. You would see their forms. Maybe we'll just kind of put a gray band in here for their faces and hats and heads. Maybe a little bit of yellow and pink mixed in. And a little bit of brown. And we'll let it be really sloppy. Remember, that's a lighter colored. I think we need to kind of tie them all together with a little more blur of blue. And then I'm going to go over all that with um, with like a white colored pencil and blur it all together. And I think I don't have a good silvery color, so we'll just do like a yellow gold there. And buttons. Might as well do those while we have this out. But those buttons, I'll probably have to come back and do those buttons with a drop of white or something. Um, and the belts. Let's give the belts, let's give the belts a different brown, just to break things up here. Give them all the same belt and cartridge box. And then we can kind of tie that together by laying, laying down a little outline of brown along their uniforms, maybe. And that kind of like helps your eyes see that those all go together. Like there's a little brown in the blue, maybe a little blue in the brown. Helps mix them together. That's my theory, at least. There we go. That's starting to look kind of cool, having that brown outline along them. It kind of gives them some light there. All right. So that's cool. I'm going to definitely darken his face as we go, but I think I'll wait and see what kind of surroundings he has once we lay down the colored pencils. So I might take a quick snapshot there and put my hand in there. I like to grab a snapshot every now and then of different stages, um, just so I can remember how far we got here. I'm thinking I better add like brown belts to all these guys, maybe brown in to lessen the blue of their between the marching legs there. There we go. Nice, all right. Okay, I think we're ready to switch gears here. Let me just check the comments and whatnot. <laughs> Curious George says, that's an interesting way to do it. Um, well, it is, yeah. I mean, it's, um, let me put this aside and we'll keep going. It's, it's always interesting to see other artists, you know, see how they work. And I figured I've got to get back into coloring posters because I'm working on volume three of this series, right? I have volume one and volume two out. Volume two is up for a uh, best graphic novel of the year from the uh, National Cartoonist Society. It's coming up in September. They're gonna have a virtual celebration um, and volume two has been nominated. So that's exciting. Wanna have some new artwork to show around the ceremonies. Um, and this is for volume three. Volume three takes place in 1864. I'll show you a couple pages I was working on. Um, I'm gonna have Freeman Colby 
going through the Washington streets, stopping off at the White House and getting to hear uh, Abraham Lincoln's speech from April 16th, April 18th, sorry, 1864. So I'm just working on that. These are very rough pages, but it's coming together. And then within a month, he'll be out in the wilderness. So what a what a piece of history these all these people saw. I'm so grateful for the chance to work with their stories. The whole book, the whole series, of course, is based on their letters, their diaries. I'm giving this guy a five o'clock shadow. He has not shaved yet today as he's, or maybe this week as he's uh, heading into battle here. All right, let's shift gears. Let's go back to our, whoops. Let me make sure I have my screen up, okay. Let's go back to our Winslow Homer source and figure out how we're gonna do this forest. I see a lot of green. I see a lot of sort of tan and brown. Like I said, he laid down a dark layer and then painted light colors on top of that. That's great if you have light colored oil paints, but uh, I'm gonna have to do it the opposite way around. I'm gonna lay down light layers and then the dark will cover that. That's how, just how crayons work. So let's start. Um, Let's start up here in the top, because I did notice a lot of sort of light greens up there in the canopy, along with the shadows, but there's a little more light up there, so we can, let's just lay down, let's go in with a purple. So I'll take my color, my, my purple crayon. Get my, I don't, I just have, you know, a basic set of crayons I got for like $1.99 at a back to school sale. Let's go in with this purple and we'll, lay down some purple shadows, like we said, to tie everything together. Maybe some shadows in under this ivy. Remember that ivy, that's a, that's a quote from Winslow Homer. He's got this reddish ivy growing on that tree on the right. We flipped everything here. We took his composition and flipped it because I wanted my readers in a comic, they're reading left to right. So I wanted them to be advancing from this side, moving across to this side. That'll get you to turn the page and keep reading, hopefully. So I flipped it around. Winslow Homer wasn't necessarily thinking of readers in a graphic novel, I bet. Although he was drawing for um, readers in Harper's Weekly and magazines like that. But look at this. I said we'd start at the top. Here I am at the bottom already. But he wasn't thinking of like connecting all these pages together in a seamless, continuous reading experience, the way a graphic novel does. It's interesting. Sometimes they worked with panels even but they put them all out of order. They didn't really care to put them left to right, top to bottom, the way a graphic novelist would expect to. Not that that's better or worse, you know, it's just, it shows you how they're thinking of the medium. Now this purple is a lot brighter, a lot more like that reddish purple that I started with. Uh, that'll mix in nicely. There will be some more shadows in parts of these woods. Um, definitely more shadows up in here in the distance. It's going to be very shadowed in the future. The right side is the future. That's what they're heading towards. Lots of shadows up there. Murky woods. Just some gun smoke floating through it. We'll gray that in. But it won't be as colored as the rest of the woods. And if I can kind of murk up the back with purples and blues, this tree will pop out in front. So it might all look the same right now, but my plan is to selectively murk the background, murk wood here, and then bring the foreground out with brighter colors. That's the idea at least. Okay, there's a little bit of purple, maybe some shadows up in the canopy here. Let's go in with, I thought I saw, let's just get these out and see what we have. This is just a standard, uh, what, 24 crayon set. Nothing too fancy. You don't need a lot of colors, you know. You don't need thousands of different colors of crayons. Here's what I'm looking for, this sort of yellow green. I saw a lot of that up there in the, um, in the top. Yeah, greens. Let's lay down the yellow green as a base, and then we'll add some more greens up there. Boy, now that I add this purple in the background, this guy looks clumsily brown. So I can always go back in and, you know, 
smooth over his colors and get him looking a little more coherent. He looks like somebody just spilled a crayon box on him, turned him yellow. Looks a little Muppety actually. All right, so I'm gonna go in and lay down a base layer of like luminous light green here. I kind of, I'm not a color artist. I tend to do all black and white and then every now and then I, I mess around with colors. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think the reason I like crayons is like a crayon, <laughs> nobody expects you to hold a crayon and be a master artist, right? Crayon gives you a license to be like a kindergarten artist or something, which, which is another form of master artist, I think. But crayon gives you this license to just be creative like a kid and play with the colors. And if it comes out looking kind of crazy, well, you know, crayon, crazy, kind of sounds like maybe there is a connection, I don't know. It might look a little like a uh, train full of crayons crashed into this page and they all just spilled down. It's really gonna look strange now, especially as, as I'm like mixing light greens, yellow greens with purples, it's gonna look uh, just hideous. But don't worry, we'll, we'll mix things together. Let's put some light greens down here. We're gonna have to be patient with this one because we're really gonna build up these woods with lots of colors. Winslow Homer used lots of colors in his woods. So we'll just tie them together with a little light green down in here. We're gonna get pretty messy down here in a controlled way. And it's gonna look awful, you know? If I just stopped coloring now, you'd say, ugh, what kind of com color combinations are these? But I'm gonna build my colors. I, I just kind of, because I don't know colors too well, I just have to build and build and layer and layer. So this is the uh, loathsome yellow green layer. All right, that's gonna give us some light though. Some of that light that Winslow Homer kind of paints on top of his dark layer, that's gotta underlay our work because we're not painting here. So look at that up in the upper left. You get some light around the tree trunks. That's kind of cool. Maybe there could be, maybe somewhere up in here, there is like, patch of light among the shadows and we'll leave it a little lighter up there. That's very cool. Definitely in here, definitely in there. Light filtering down through. Okay, so far so good. Let's bring in another shade of green because I'm thinking we want this mostly green. Even if Winslow Homer, his looks a little autumnal. This is May. We definitely want it kind of green looking, although the woods were pretty dry. There are stories of during the battle, the, um, the artillery shells bursting in the woods and the dry, dry woods would set the woods on fire. And then it was this nightmare landscape of flames roaring through the woods, shells screaming overhead. Imagine wounded soldiers trying to escape the flames, you know, trying to help each other escape the flames. Freeman Colby's unit was, um, they were sent to recapture an abandoned set of guns, of artillery pieces. They failed, they ran back to their trenches and then the order came. They left a lot of, a lot of their comrades wounded on the ground in front of them, uh, in the valley in front of them. And then the order came that no man was to go out and try to bring back a wounded man because they, they had to marshal their forces they couldn't risk it. And they were forbidden to help their comrades. My goodness. So this is going to become, at this moment it isn't yet, but it's going to become a really trying, really harrowing few weeks of constant battle for these, for these guys. All right, getting, building a good gr greenish layer here on the bottom. We're going to build a lot of colors over that. A lot of blues and browns and then reds and oranges. So even if I stopped coloring now, it would look really uh, kind of ham-handed, right? Let's work some greens up here. I'm drawing right to the edge. Remember, coloring all the way to the edge, even though the most important things all stay off the edge. 
Now, because there's that under layer of light green, no matter what colors I put over here, that's gonna kind of tie them all together and help your eyes see, oh, here's the top of the, the, the canopy. And then we'll tie them all together down here and you'll see, oh, there's the lower part of the forest. So we'll tie them all together down here. And then you'll see, oh, there's the gun smoke floating through it. Like I said, we won't get finished with this tonight. It's gonna take some time, as you can see, it's gonna take some time to build up our colors here, get it so that it looks anything like that dark murky painting there. Might take some creative uses of our materials too, because some of those effects Winslow Homer gets with his paints, we're just not gonna be able to do with our crayons, but let's see, let's see. I like the, uh, the green and the purple mixes into, uh, wow, it's mixing into sort of a gray shadow there. That's part of the murk. We'll add some blue to that too. As things go back into the shadows, they get bluer. So we'll use that to make it look like it's in the distance there. Things out in front will be brighter colored, higher contrast. Okay, I'm gonna set this green aside and add just some highlights with a darker green. There's really only a few greens in this set of uh, 24 crayons, right? And this green is clearly too vibrant for the forest that Winslow Homer is showing us, but it's okay for highlights, for, uh, for accents in the greenery. Most of this greenery is gonna be pretty heavily, I think I'm gonna add a little green to the ivy, even though it's gonna be mostly reddish. A lot of this um, greenery, this the, the forest plants, is going to be mostly kind of brownish and reddish. Very dry, terribly, terribly dry tinder for the coming battle. These parts of Virginia, too, the other terrifying thing to think about with this coming battle, these parts of Virginia have been fought over in 1861. They've been fought over in 1862. They've been fought over in 1863. And this is 1864. You know, it's the third summer that these armies have ranged across this countryside. And people like Sarah Lowe riding trains through this countryside, she describes just a wasteland. I mean, this is, I've been saying this all, all summer. People say, oh my goodness, times are tough. You know, I can't imagine how we're going to have an election in, in all this crazy times. And I, I just say, 1864, <laughs> they had an election. They pulled it off. They kept things going. Parts of Virginia were just this wasteland. Um, Sarah Lowe describes riding trains through central Virginia, northern and central Virginia, and there's just, the train tracks are just lined with the ruins of destroyed train cars and pulled up tracks that have been replaced and the bones of horses. And, and as they marched into the wilderness, they could see, even in 1863, as they marched through Northern Virginia, these guys could see, you know, washed out graves of the armies of the past two summers. And then they're marching down into this battle and they were in such high spirits because they knew, they felt, they felt this could be it, the final push. They didn't realize how much longer they still had. That's looking a little better. Look at that, the shadows with the black lines, the, the darker green, that starts to look like you could go hide in it or run through it and push through and see these guys on the other side. I like how that's looking. I'm going to bring this green up into their legs and mix it in a little more. Remember, they're blurred, but we're going to keep them much lighter than these guys. These guys are up front, so they're higher contrast, higher darks and lights. These guys are in the distance. There might be smoke drifting in front of them. They're going to be a little more faint, and we'll even mix them in with, uh, with some um, white crayons, maybe a uh, white colored pencil. The white is great for mixing things in. I'm gonna check the comments here. 
Um, what do we have? Oh, we have some comments. Um, hey, my old guitar buddy, Tim Hall, my old high school bandmate. Looks like I got here just in time, says Tim. Hey, Tim, nice to see your avatar out here. Um, Liz, I always learn so much about artistic technique in addition to history when you do the live draws. Oh, thank you, Liz. I really appreciate being able to watch your sessions. That's nice of you. Um, I really appreciate people uh, coming out. This can be such lonely work, you know, as a cartoonist uh, getting lost in 1864 and, um, and doing this research and then doing this artwork. It happens slowly. You know, if I'm drawing a I'm drawing a 500 page book like volume two, volume three should be slightly shorter. Um, I set a goal of drawing like one, two, maybe three pages a day. And that is a full day of work. Um, and that's research and artwork and sometimes even processing and sc scanning and processing. Um, and sometimes it's going back and redrawing yesterday's page or two. Um, but you know, it's it's slow work, but it's really worth it. I mean, all of these characters, they're all real people. This is drawn from the uh, from the pocket notebooks of Walt Whitman, you know. Um, so these are all real people, and and I think it's really worthwhile spending a little time telling their stories. Uh, in this case, you know, sitting by their bedside and being there when they open their eyes and and so on. And I feel like we can we can do that, but we have to put in we have to put in the attention and learn what these stories are, you know? Um, so if I can get two pages, maybe three pages done in a day, I'm in great shape. So that's, you know, that's several hundred days of work there. <laughs> um, if you can work every day, which sometimes you can't, sometimes there's little things like um, quarantines or school visits and things. So there's always interesting stuff going on in every historical period. But we're keeping it going. And thank you, thank you to um, patrons. And thanks to people who supported the, the PayPalers and all those folks who supported um, Comics Camp this summer. It's been a really fun summer of, I, I just really love setting the habit of drawing together, doing these live draws with you. It's so good to look forward to that, especially like the Friday end of the week live draw, just get together and draw stuff, um, bring whatever you're working on, uh, feel free to send me your stuff. You can post it and uh, and just just tag it, uh, hashtag ComicsCamp2020, all one word, or at Merrick Bennett, and I'll see it too. And uh, that's really cool to see the projects everybody's working on. And if you want to get the, um, the updates and the invites to every live draw, I'm going to be doing this all fall too. I've, I'm setting up a schedule. Haven't announced it yet, but we'll set that up. Um, and all fall, we'll have a regular weekly schedule, and I'll probably be doing, you know, projects like this. I'm going to really focus on Freeman Colby Volume Three, and a couple other really exciting projects I'm I'm getting started on. Uh, we've got the Loons, uh, another lead poisoning one, um, uh, anti lead poisoning comic, and uh, oh my gosh, we've got uh, the Who Is Jeremiah Crocker, which kind of ties into Freeman Colby. Lots to come. So if you head over to the Patreon, it's um, patreon.com slash Merrick Bennett. You can hit join and then you'll get all the updates, invites to uh, the new live draws. And you can actually sign up annually now at this point. That's new this week, actually. Um, so you can sign up for a year. And that's a little, that's, I always do that when I join Patreons because it's just a little easier to uh, to know you're locked in for a year and you get a, you get a discount too. All right, I think last thing we'll do today, I'm gonna to take a quick snapshot of this, click. I think last thing we'll do today, just to see what it looks like, oh, let's do those pine trees, is let's add some blue into this green, just a little bit of blue, not our final layer of blue, but I wanna kind of bring out the, the shadows and the depth with a little blue, not the blue of their uniforms, and then next time we can come in and we'll add in some browns and then we'll get the yellows and reds that are woven through these uh, this green. We've really changed from Winslow Homer's brown dry landscape here, but that's okay. We're using him as a jumping off point. And then we, we really want to spend time in Freeman Colby's world, which is a lot different from Winslow Homer's world, but it's inspired and informed by it. 
I like how this distance is looking. Let's come in with like a, a blue green and add a little bit of not so much murkiness, but uh, like reflected light, distant light, the yellow light of sunshine coming through the leaves. A little blue of the sky at the edge there. Maybe we'll see a distant sky. Oh, I hear thunder in the distance. This could get interesting, folks. If I suddenly disappear, it's just a passing thunderstorm. I'm going to go get on my bike and ride up to town, actually. So we'll see how that goes. I was up in the graveyards up in town today um, doing some filming, actually, for a top secret project. It was beautiful and sunny. But now I hear thunder in the distance. That's getting murky over there. Look at the green back here on the page. Look at the green and the purple and the blue mixing together. Oh, I like the look of that. It's like a complicated, complicated dark combination of lights. Let's make sure we get up in there too. I really like the contrast. I like how all these colors mix together. We just take the time, you know, like I said, crayons a license to play. It's a license to be a, a child again, um, be a master kindergarten artist. Just play, like see how these colors go together. Stuff you like, try it again. Stuff you don't like, I don't know, cover it up. <laughs> Darken it till it's gone. That's getting nice and murky in there. I may come back and just add a lot more purple into that shadow in there. I think I will add some of this blue to this tree trunk so it doesn't look like totally otherworldly. See how different this looks from the mixed colors here? I do want it to, to, to not like pop out completely and look like it's been Photoshopped in. So I better add some blues in there because that'll tie the whole picture together to have that like that jarring blue in the browns of the tree trunk. It'll help. I think it helps your eyes see it. When you get a little strange color mixed in here and there. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking especially for areas where there's like a little bit of white where I didn't quite color so darkly and I'll come in and fill it with the blue and that becomes like a little shadowed area. Maybe I'll outline this this fallen branch that is going to become firewood once the shells start bursting on the woods here. And maybe I'll come in and do like some blues as if the plants are kind of the, the blue of the uniforms is seeping into the branches here. That might help tie things together, help murk things up a little bit around these guys, but I don't want them, I don't want them to fade. I'm, I don't want it like blue on blue. I don't want them to fade into that landscape. So it's not like they're camouflaged. I want to use it to highlight them. Let's see. And then, oh, we're going to have dark shadows up close. This is going to be nice and dark because this stuff up close, that's where you see the strongest shadows. So it'll help the corners look really dark if we kind of color in these corners. Stepping back, you'll see like these dark shadows on the corners, maybe even up here too. Yeah, look at that. I did a lot of ink up there. So that'll be a good place. We'll even come in with some navy blue and darken those corners. Boy, it's getting really dark out here and I hear thunder in the distance. I think we are just about out of time, but this is also why I tend to work in black and white because uh, drawing in color takes extra time, <laughs> especially when I do it this way, when I'm just like slowly, slowly building up my colors. You know, we're starting to get there. I think next we've got to work in um, some purples. I also wanna start working in some oranges. It might surprise us how these oranges work in. And then we'll uh, bring some reds and browns in and then we'll come back in with the greens. And I think by that point, oh, look at that. There's like yellows and light oranges in there too. So we can use some of these, maybe this kind of orange also. 
um, to fill in some of those gaps. Look at all the reds, uh, oranges and yellows he used in there. So we'll use that actually to fill in some of the gaps, um, some of the lighter parts, like right there, you know, we'll come in with an orange and fill that in and we'll make it look really, really rich and detailed um, by mixing these colors in there and outlining the shapes of the branches. But that I think is a whole other project. And then we've got to look at how he got these barks on the trees. Maybe we can learn from him or maybe we'll just find our own way because his are pretty dark. Oh yeah, look at the light on that one. A lot of faint tans and yellows. So we'll, we'll play with that. Um, but that'll be the next setting. Uh, for now, I'm gonna take a quick, maybe I'll mix some of my tools in here and I'll put my tag down there and or maybe up here and I'll take a quick snapshot. Thank you so much everybody for um, for joining us and stopping by. All right. I'm going to also come up here and sorry, gonna come up here and check our comments. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions you can actually um, send them you can swing on over to the patreon or send them to me directly you've got my facebook con contacts obviously um nice to draw with you all have a wonderful weekend and uh i won't touch this until the next live draw that we do with this maybe i'll come back on in the weekend and we'll play with darkening those woods a little bit um and then we've got to figure out how to do the gun smoke Whew, that's going to be interesting um all right have a great weekend everybody see you soon thanks patrons